Hey everybody, oh god, my hair, Ugh, I just got out of the shower, I'm sorry, my head's swung, my hair's a little bit wet. My name is Angel Benton, and this is the Angel Sudsy Recap, where we delve into the world of daytime television, and we do a few reality shows on the side, and one of those daytime TV shows that we are doing is General Hospital. But before we get into this past week on General Hospital, so today's Sunday, and it's Super Bowl Sunday, and, you know, here's the thing with the Super Bowl with me. You know, depending on who's performing at the halftime show, I might tune in or not. Now, I don't necessarily have anything against Justin Timberlake except the fact that, you know, I think he should have I think he should have at least acknowledged a little bit that uh about Janet Jackson. You know what I mean? Because I think it's kinda fucked up that Janet Jackson can't come back to the Super Bowl and Justin Timberlake can, so that's kinda whatever. In any case, now Having said that, I have to say, I think I, this is what I think, and I could be 100% wrong. So if I'm wrong, that's fine. You know, I'm just, this, my theory is that they both knew exactly what they were doing at the Super Bowl. There was wardrobe malfunction my ass. They both did it on purpose. Um, but regardless, I think that, you know, I think that it's a little bit, excessive to ban Janet Jackson from the Super Bowl, but not Justin Timberlake. So that's kind of, it's kind of fucked up. Okay. But so as much as I, you know, I think he's fine. You know, I loved him in that movie with, um, Mila Kunis. I don't even remember what it was, but you know, he was fine in that. Um, he was good in the social network too, you know, but other than that, and he's great on Saturday Night Live. He's hilarious. But, you know, I'm just, I'm not a huge fan. I, I'm not, I'm not a Justin Timberlake fan. So, you know, in terms of him doing the Super Bowl, sorry. So I haven't watched the Super Bowl at all. But why do I have to when I can just go onto Facebook and Twitter and I can see everyone either bitching about his performance or loving his performance, which it's actually been about like for every one person that loves it, there's like four people that hate it. So I'm just saying. And then also, um, Pink. Apparently Pink was just incredible during the, the, the national anthem. So kudos to you, Pink. Good for you. You know, I know that you're sick. And you did great anyway, so you better get it. Okay, so let's talk about General Hospital. So I mentioned last week how Ryan Pavey was leaving the show and how um, he hosted this, this like, uh, I think, it was it Twitter? Yeah, it was a Twitter. It was an Ask Me Anything that, you know... Um, General Hospital does that a lot, though, so that's good. They have they have their cast at, do the whole Ask GH, and then, you know, you talk to the people in the show. And that's, that's really good. It's a nice way for them to connect with their fans. Do I look a little bit skinnier? I feel like I do. I feel like I'm getting thinner. Oh, my God, I had two hours of pole dancing class today. I want to die. But, no, it, it was good. It was fun. It was great. Um, okay, so back to General Hospital. So, you know, and like I said, I just think that Frank needs to just call Jeannie Francis because it's annoying. But I would like to see Genevieve back in Young and the Restless. I'm just saying. So, uh, here's the thing. This week is the week that Nathan West, who is uh, the character that Ryan Pavey played, uh, was killed. And I have to give, well, okay, here's the thing. Now, everyone was talking about Michelle Stafford and Kirsten Storms and what great actresses they are and what a great performance they gave. And I'm not going to disagree with any of that. I think all of that is true. However, I would also add to that mix Risa Dorkin, who plays Amy Driscoll. Oh, my God, she was devastated. Because, you know, if you think about it, her brother is alive because of Nathan. And Nathan's gone. And they had be forged a real cool little friendship. And that was that's all that it ever was, was just a friendship. But it was great that they actually were able to find each other and shit. It was it was oh my god. And and then she and then he dies and she's actually working on him and it was she just couldn't save him and it was just oh my god. She ripped my heart out. I fucking love her. I love her. I love her. Um yeah, she's great. Okay, and there was someone else that died. Caesar Faison. 
So Faison died, and we found out that Peter August is Faison's son. Now, who is his mother? We have no idea. Although it might be Anna. Anna's talking about... I mean... If Anna is Peter August's mother, that's not good. That's like a... That would be like a serious rewrite of history. And they've done that before. They did that with Laura and Nicholas. So, yeah. Now, they were able to sort of make that work. But like I said, here's the thing. And this is with all soaps, not just General Hospital. There are certain wells you can only go to once. Right? So, they went to this, I had a child a long time ago. I gave him up a uh, well one time with Nicholas. And now they're doing it again with Peter August. And it's just like, oh, my. Well, no, I don't know that they're doing it again. I don't know. I know that she said that that Faison has a son. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe she's got another. I don't God, I hope not, though. Ugh. Okay. It was nice, though, that we got to see Peter August. You know, um, he had a scene with Carly. That was cool because they're dating in real life. So that was cool. Um, Nell, oh God, Nell. You know who, you know who actually has done a really good job with their scenes this week? Which is, um, and this is going to sound weird, but it's true. It's, um, Michael Corinthos. Michael had a really good week. He did really, really good. And, um, especially in the scenes with Kiki. So Michael and Kiki saw each other at Ruby's and, um... No, at Kelly's. Oh, it's Kelly's. But Ruby used to work there. Oh, rest in peace, Ruby. I fucking love Ruby. I wonder if it was ever addressed what happened to her. She's the best. I fucking love her. Anyways. Um, and Ava was kind of a bitch to the, wa to the waitress. And in a way, though, I'm actually kind of glad for that because Ava... It proves that Ava is not perfect and she's not redeemed 100% yet and that's good though because you know human beings are there's no one person that's 100% good and there's no one person that's 100% bad we're all shades of gray everyone is so it's nice to see that all these wonderful things that Ava's been doing with her life but she's still a little bit of a bitch that was nice I thought that was a nice that was a nice uh touch um you know what? I, you know who I think is sort of missing from this because Kirsten Storms was just ripping my heart out all week. The thing is, is I would like to see Frisco. I mean, he is her father. Now, don't get me wrong. Felicia and Max showed up. But it would be nice to just have Jack Wagner back one time for Maxie. I mean, that would be nice. Okay. Anyways. Moving on. So, also, you know, Jason and Drew, they're finding out more about, you know, why they were taken because Jason took some time to interrogate Faison before he died. And, um, basically, basically, the long end of the story is, um, Faison wanted Jason to be his enforcer as opposed to Sonny. So, all of Faison's mind control techniques, however, did not work on Jason because of the brain damage from the car accident. So, yeah, because he was in a car accident with his brother AJ, and that's why, that's how Jason Morgan was born, because he had no recollection of his time as Jason Quartermain. Okay, that's fine. So... Uh, he was researching the Navy SEALs, and then he saw a picture of a guy that looked exactly like Jason. He ran the DNA test and found out they were twins, and Dr. Maddox had been doing this, uh, uh and this is where it gets a little bit stupid, is Dr. Maddox had this, uh, this, uh, uh this, he was doing research on, on twins and memory, and then he decided he downloaded all of... Uh, all of somebody's memories onto a flash drive. I mean, that that part is pretty stupid. That's something that I would expect on Days of Our Lives. Not because it's stupid, but just because it would fit in with that show a little more than it does in General Hospital. I'm just saying. 
Um, and, you know, then they got Drew instead. So, and they gave Jason Drew's memories. I mean, uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. But, I mean, it makes sense to me, but it's kind of stupid. Just saying. Anyways, thank you so much for logging on today. So, I remember how I was talking about how I was going to be doing my special series this evening. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it tonight or not. I might do it tomorrow morning. So, keep in touch. It's coming. It is very it is very close. Um, and I think I've decided what I'm going to talk about. And it's something that happened to me close to, no, well, 19 years ago. So we'll discuss, we'll discuss. Anyways, thank you so much for logging on today. I do appreciate it. Please feel free to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Angel Benton. You can hashtag GH to talk about General Hospital, or you can also hashtag Amazing Race to talk Amazing Race. I'm doing that tomorrow, probably tomorrow night. And you can hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel to get my YouTube video sent to your email inbox every single day. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for logging on today. Have a wonderful day. Peace out. Wubba, wubba, wubba.